Marhaba, marhaba, shabab. So, welcome to part 14 of this tutorial series. Um, we're still in the task fragment, so let's continue with that. So, let's take this not implemented method and write private. By the way, you could also do it with a shortcut like, you know, like option alt enter and create great function but sometimes I, I want it to be here at the bottom so that's sometimes the ID just put it somewhere and that's why I'm just creating it manually right now now we have our view model we have our view model and here we have is task delete successful life data as you can see here and we need to observe here the life data few lives have owner and here we say um, uh, just wrong line is successful this is our iterator if it's successful we check and first is successful uh, this is because it's a boolean value Full. Okay, because it's a boolean value, uh, we can test things. If it's successful, um, we show again a toast message. Show toast message. Say require context, and here we put a string. Get string. Uh, let me just look up which one we need to use. Okay, uh, r dot string dot task request task underscore request success message, and we call again the view model to fetch again data because the yeah uh, because the one task got deleted. Else we say. We say, we again, show toast message, show toast message, say again, require context as a parameter, as an argument, and again, get string, and r dot string. Task underscore request failure. And we can lock here something. Timber D for development purposes only to see the deletion status. Delete status. We say and we mm -hmm, where it is. Is successful we see which kind of value it holds and uh, that's basically it so we have one more method and uh, this is this one and let me just try to create a function yeah I just I don't want it to be here I want to have a structure for you guys so let's put it here because I like to uh, let me just show it to you First, I like to have always at the beginning the overridden methods and then the um, private public methods of the class. Okay, here we just do some uh, UI adjustments with, and then we say binding. Nice. And then we say again curly braces. Then we need the retry fetch button here we set a set on click listener okay we say button the button visibility goes to visible
Let me try a little bit of the... Ah, sorry. Uh, ah, when it, when when the button got clicked, uh, we shortly want to dis uh, disable it. So that because we are doing a call to the view model, first we let it disappear, as well as the empty text visibility. Here will be also view will be also gone. Then we, we need the shimmer frame. We need to say st start shimmer animation because so the user when the user clicks on the button, when the user clicks on the button, first we want that the button and the text should disappear. Then the loading state starts because that's why we are activating the start shimmer animation. And the whole shimmer frame should be also, of course, visible. Visibility view dot visible, and these lines should be yeah like this. Uh, and just visibility, and then okay. And then we say call the view model to fetch the data. And yeah, when it's, this is done, it, it will go again into here in this method. And yeah, that's basically it. Uh, we have one more missing thing, but yeah, this. Uh, okay, now it's good. I just forgot. I mean, in my medium.com article, I named it a little bit differently. And uh, now we should be good to go. Okay, let me just remove this line here, this empty line. Reformat everything and that's uh, good. Okay, nice. We are done with the task fragment implementation. This is the parent class which holds the necessary logic. And now we can just slowly adapt the other, the other child fragments like task open fragment. Let me show it to you. Uh, we need again an annotation first. Experimental Coroutines API. Yes, this is also an Android entry point. This is the class op task open fragment. It inherits from task fragment. And yes, and yes, and yes. Implement the members, yes. Okay, that looks good for now. Uh, yes, but here we have something special because we have in this fragment we will have also the creation of a new task for in the open task fragment. So let us override on view created. Let's say set up uh, create task button uh, create function. Yes, just put it down below here. And uh, good, looks good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here we need also a life cycle call to on resume. Always when the user resumes back to here, we need to call view model. So the data gets always fetched when the user navigates back to the screen. And uh, yeah, we can just now just start slowly implementation. Here we say for the color value, the color. This is the card color. What I'm doing now is context compat get color okay and we say our color dot Uh, the open task should be dark gray. Mm. Import 
his color and here is dark gray that's awesome and then we say controller the controller comes from our parent class task fragment and we can here say task epoxy controller color and that's it as you can see task fragment okay nice here we have our view model here we can say view model fetch tasks and this will be sorry task status comes now into play say open and here we say to string because it's an enum value as you can see enum entry okay this is so to fetch our uh, open and closed fragment and the other empty methods um, you can leave them for now because for this navigation stuff in here and to nav navigate to the task creation uh, we need to set up the navigation graph first to because then when we build our project uh, the necessary code gets them generated for us um, but now yeah for now leave it empty we will do it in another tutorial in the next or after that one let's just jump into a task closed fragment let me just copy this all of this just rename it task closed fragment okay so and implement members yes implement them please okay here again we need on resume to call the view model okay on view created doesn't need to be overwritten again so 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 uh, let me just check okay let's start with the i mean we can also copy some code again here because this is almost the same task closed but here the color is different here it is green dark okay and this is uh, and the fab layout of course we don't want to show it i mean the the create task button i call it fab layout fab layout dot visibility view dot gone this is gone this is great and here again we say view model fetch tasks uh, task status to closed and to string as here he is open and here are the closed tasks and uh, again this one we need from we get to implement this code from the navigation graph which will be generated from for us by the uh, android framework so leave it empty right now just do a quick implementation here we can also copy again stuff okay okay and here we can say implement members again and we need again of course on resume Call view model. Okay. Here we can apply this logic again to in initialize the controller. This will be just black in here, and the rest is good to go. And here again, calling the view model view model dot fetch tasks and here's now because we don't need a status we just want to fetch all the tasks doesn't matter if closed or not and yeah just get rid of this line break in here just make this all nice uh, formatted okay this looks good this looks good open tasks okay 
Okay. And yeah, I would say this is it for this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, write me a comment. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. You know the drill. And I see you in the next video. So, ila likaya shabab.